A VOR hold is broken into four parts. At its simplest, each part will be a one minute leg. The inbound leg, the outbound turn, the outbound leg, and the inbound turn. Like all IFR maneuvers, the turns are made at a standard rate, ensuring that a 180 degree course change takes one minute. With a heavy crosswind, the aircraft will drift off course without a correction. Even with a wind correction to keep the aircraft on the inbound track, as well as a correction to maintain a parallel outbound track, the aircraft will spiral off course. This happens because no correction is being made on either of the turn legs. They're still made at a standard rate. We take this into account by making our correction on the outbound leg triple. We're correcting for the wind not only on the outbound leg, but on both of the turn legs as well. This has the effect of sort of pinching and stretching the ground track of the hold pattern. If we have a 10 degree correction to maintain the inbound course, we triple it and use a 30 degree correction outbound. It didn't make any sense to me why a triple correction was needed on the outbound leg until I understood it as correcting for not just the one leg, but three, the outbound leg and the two turns. When you learn turns around a point in private, you learn to change your bank angle and thus your rate of turn to keep a constant distance around a point. But in IFR, we aren't doing ground reference maneuvers, so we stay at a standard rate, with the wind pushing us one way or the other and needing to account for the errors on that outbound leg. Let's have a look at a real world example. We'll be flying the hold at the Dogwood VOR as depicted on the approach plate for Ava in Missouri. From inside the cockpit, we're flying inbound along the 286 radial. We have a stiff crosswind, indicated by the wind box here, 27 knots almost directly from our left. Because of this, in order to keep the needle centered for that 106 degree inbound course, we're having to fly a heading of 096. It's a 10 degree correction. We're on autopilot here using heading mode to make small corrections to keep the needle centered. When we cross over the station, the to flag disappears and flips to the from flag. We turn the heading bug to start a right turn. We're flying a standard rate as indicated by the magenta arc on that second hash above the HSI. It'll take us one minute to complete the 180 degree turn. The wind is pushing us away from the inbound course to the outside of the turn. We're going to roll out of the turn on a heading that gives us triple the correction we used inbound. We corrected 10 left on the inbound, so we'll use 30 right on the outbound. Instead of turning to 286, which is the outbound course, we're turning to 316. When the flag flips to from, we start timing one minute for the leg. Yes, we're turning into the wind to compensate now that it's off our right side, but we're purposely overcorrecting. You'll notice our ground track isn't parallel with the inbound course. We're actually creeping to the inside. At the end of the minute, we begin another right turn. Again, it's a standard rate turn, but because we're now turning into the wind, the ground track is much more compacted. Thanks to the triple drift correction, we're able to roll out of the turn as we intercept the inbound course, flying that same 10 degree correction to the left. We should time our inbound leg. It should take one minute. If it's shorter or longer, we would make an appropriate change to how long we fly our outbound leg to compensate, but this looks pretty much spot on. We begin another standard rate turn to the right once over the VOR and make another outbound leg with the 30 degree correction right. Triple drift correction is a way to sort of game the system when you're doing a traditional hold with VORs, balancing your accounts which were skewed by those two standard rate turns. When you're flying a hold using GPS, and especially with the use of flight director and or an autopilot, the triple drift correction may not be necessary. Let's watch how the G1000 flight director handles the same hold, this time using GPS. As we pass over the station, the autopilot begins a right turn. Just as before, it's a standard rate turn, so with the wind out of the northeast, it's blowing us to the outside, away from the inbound course. We roll out on a heading that gives us a track at 286. It's the exact same track of the outbound course parallel to the inbound course, which we can see on both the MFD and the breadcrumbs on foreflight. There's no triple drift correction here. We might guess that we'll be in trouble when we make the turn. A standard rate turn with the wind blowing us away from the inbound course will cause us to undershoot our intercept. Let's see how the GPS handles it. We start the turn and now notice above the HSI we're not in a standard rate turn, but barely a half standard rate turn instead. The GPS is keeping us on the racetrack pattern by adjusting our turn rate. It's cheating by looking at the ground, so to speak, or at least looking at our ground track, something we couldn't do when flying just off the VOR. 
The shallower turn allows us to push further into the wind and stretch into the intercept with that inbound course. We roll out of the turn in the same correction to the left into the wind. So the triple drift correction is a bit of an antiquated technique used when you have no idea what the wind is doing to your ground track, which has largely been superseded by accurate real-time GPS position. Still, it's important to know whether a normal or triple wind correction is required on your outbound legs, given the equipment and type of procedure you have. If you love IFR like we do, our full instrument ground school is definitely for you. Come see why thousands of pilots a year are taking their flying to new heights using our courses at the website flight-insight.com, linked here and in the description.